Hello, 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 and welcome to our extended disc webinar. Um, today we're going to talk about eye styles, and this is the second in our disc styles series. Um, if you would like to find the first D style webinar, you can find it at our YouTube channel website. Um, so welcome uh, again. Our topic today is eye styles. Am I liked? Uh, my name is Christina Bowser. I'm the trainer director here at Extended Disc North America, and I'm your host for today. And joining me is my counterpart, my wonderful counterpart, um, Amy Lipinski. She's the senior trainer here at Extended Disc. Good morning, Christina. Good morning. So just a few logistical items. Um, we are recording this webinar, so if you need to jump out or you came in late um, or if you'd like to share it with anyone, you'll find it at our um, YouTube channel, Extended Disc North America. And also, as with all of our um, other webinars, we pack it in to these 30 minutes. So we do encourage your questions. However, we won't be answering them live. Um, so put them in the question box and we'll follow up with you after the session. So let's get started. Um, so, you know, with all of our disc styles, talking about each of e each of the disc styles, we do it in its purest form because it's important for us to really get that clear understanding of the differences and similarities between D, I, S, and C, and to recognize that, you know, there's no better style although I always jokingly say <laughs> there are some styles of you, some of you out there that may think your style is better. Um, we just say you, sim you just have some similarities and differences and that every one of our styles brings something to the table. We all have strengths and we all have areas of development. And um, what's really interesting, and it's not always the same for all DISC tools, um, but with extended disc, of the people that take the assessment, 99% of all individuals are going to be a combination of styles. So it actually is exceptionally rare that anyone comes out 100% of a style. So going back to what I said earlier is we don't ever want to just make decisions about an individual based on their dominant style. So one of those four disc styles. We don't want to pigeonhole anyone nor do we want it to use, use the, um, the DISC profile results to make sole decisions about that person. Because we know it's only a part of who we are. DISC is a behavioral assessment. It focuses on your behaviors because behaviors are things that you can make adjustments to. But one thing that's just as important to recognize is what DISC doesn't measure. So we are not measuring your attitude, your skills, the experience that you bring, your knowledge, et cetera. Um, we are focused on behaviors. So Amy, let's talk first about where eye styles fall into the DISC model. Great, Christina. So when we think about the behaviors, um, the DISC model is developed into four quadrants and it's based on two axes. So when we look at the four quadrants, our Ds and Cs fall on the top half of the model. They tend to be more task-oriented. In the bottom half of the model, our Is and Ss tend to be more people-oriented. Everybody gets tasks done. Everybody interacts with people. We're simply measuring those behaviors. Where do you prefer to go? How do you prefer to go about your day? When we look at the second half of the model on the other axes, um, our D's and I's tend to be more active. They rely on their sixth sense, meaning they go with their intuition. And our C's and S's tend to be more reserved. They rely on their five senses. They want to see it, touch it, feel it, experience it. So today we're going to be honing in on our eye styles, and we're going to be looking at the eyes that they are people-oriented and they are active. So, Christina, why don't you introduce us to Ian? All right. So, last week we met, I forgot her name already. Diane? <laughs> Diane. Um, and this week we're going to meet Ian. So, Ian is our eye style. He's sociable. He never meets a stranger, as you, as Amy said. And, you know, everyone is just another opportunity to chat with. Um, he's very charismatic. He 
loves to talk. The, the D style, I say loves to talk, but the I style seriously loves to talk. Um, he's emotional. He's quick to make decisions. He's impulsive. Um, he's expressive. Those emotions that he has are all on the surface. Um, he, he's, you know, his body language is very animated. He's very optimistic. For many of us, we think about, you know, glass half empty, glass half full. Well, for Ian, the glass is overflowing. And um, look at the other attributes, persuasive, inspiring. And then going back to the one we said earlier, charismatic. You can see that he has these attributes that can make him a very strong leader. He has the ability to get people to follow him based on his charisma and his ability to sell his idea as well. So let's talk about what Ian tends to focus on. He is um, actively going to be involved with people and emotions. He's all about those interactions. And when Ian feels pressure, um, he becomes or we see him as being disorganized. He's that one that's running around the office frantic and his, you know, chaotic because he's probably focusing more on the people and the emotions and he will lose track of those details and tasks. Um, and those details tend to fall in the cracks. His biggest fear is social rejection. He's got a strong desire to be liked by others. He wants to be included. He likes to be popular. When it comes to change, it's all going to be fun. It's that mm -hmm. overflowing optimism. Um, it Change gives you new opportunities. You know, it's that um, seeing the future, loving that flexibility. And when it comes to doing things, Ian's like, let's just have fun. Let's go with it. Everything is about fun and making it fun. So when I first walked into Ian's office, it looked a little something like this. <laughs> in my opinion, it looked like a chaotic mess. But in asking Ian for a file, he was able to pull out the file right away from his, in my opinion, chaotic mess. But that's what Ian thrives on, is not having structure and routine. He doesn't need that structure and order like some of our other styles do. And having things just kind of all over and not being boxed in allows his creativity to flow. It's how he can process and think better. And the other thing I noticed when I walked into Ian's office was that he had pictures everywhere, pictures of family, friends, pictures of himself. He just had all kinds of pictures because he's people oriented. It connects back to that um, need to be around others, whether it's just in pictures or in person. Um, he also had music going because he needed that type of interaction. He needed to have some background, something happening um, in his office. He also had a sofa and chairs because Ian wanted me to stay. He didn't want to kick anybody out of his office right away. He invites people into his office. He wants to make it comfortable and inviting because he's about that people interaction. So he does not want to have anybody leaving his office too soon. Stay and have a cup of coffee. Yeah, stay and chat a while. It's good. It's fun. Let's do it. Um, so with Ian and the Ians of our workplace and our lives, how do we go about identifying him? So he's going to talk a lot. Um, the He's going to talk and hopefully you're going to listen. When it comes to listening, um, he doesn't listen for long. He is very, as I said, earlier. He's very animated. Um, he gets easily excited. He's open and friendly. All those emotions are on the surface, his body language. Um, he's going to be using his hands, his entire body. He loves to use superlatives. So he's going to be, you know, you might ask Ian, hey, Ian, how are you doing? He's like, oh, I've had the most amazing day. Let me tell you about it. Whereas if you maybe ask um, a different style, um, oh, how was your day? You know, they might say, oh, it was good, thanks. So 
he, as Amy mentioned, is going to come across as unorganized. Now, that may not be his perception, but we okay. may view him as um, unorganized because he's someone that focuses more on um, the people interactions rather than the tasks themselves. So he will tend to jump from subject to subject. So, you know, I jokingly say, you know, we talk about our, our dogs or my dog and you say squirrel and all of a sudden whatever he was focusing on, he's now off chasing that imaginary squirrel that you just tricked him into thinking. So, you know, Ian's going to get really excited about something like this is the best thing ever. And then two minutes later, the best thing ever just came along again. So mm -hmm. he's going to jump from subject to subject. He's going to stay away from details and hard facts. He's someone who's going to want to seek variety. He, he's going to get bored by routine. He doesn't like to be boxed in. Um, and he likes to be the center of attention. So the more praise um, and the more you l listen to him, the more energized he's going to be. And, you know, oftentimes we look for those Ian's in our office when we just kind of need that pat on the back. He's upbeat. He's going to focus on the positive. Um, so he's the one that typically will give us that kind of, you know, great positive feedback and reinforcement. Mm -hmm. um, his decision making, um, it may be spontaneous and impulsive because he's emotional. Um, sometimes it might be more hesitant because he's you know, thinking about, well, how does my decision making, the, the, the decision that I make impact how people think about me. Um, and I call the Ian's of the world, the huggers of the styles. Um, they're the ones that, you know, we typically have those, that kind of personal space. Uh, I think someone even measured it at about 18 inches, at least mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, and many of us like our personal space, but for the uh, Ian's of the world, he will come up and he will stand, you know, you might think nose to nose, but he's going to stand pretty <laughs> close to you. Um, and he, he might even put his arm around you. And I call him the uh, Ian's of the world, the huggers of the group. They are comfortable with physical contact. And you think, wow, you know, the S's. Well, they're people oriented. They, you know, they're probably going to be comfortable, but they're reserved. And then you think, well, then you have your D styles and C styles. Hugging doesn't come naturally to them. They're mm -hmm. task oriented, task focused over people focused. And Christine, I actually have a story. So I was at a client site and at the end of the um, training session in wrapping it up with the client, I went to shake hands and she informed me, oh, I'm a hugger and just pulled me in and gave me a hug. And oftentimes that's what eyes do, right? It was nice that she gave me some forewarning, um, but our eyes will just go in and go for it. Um, I love that because um, you could see that her natural is probably, I'm just going to hug you. But then she's learned over time, you know, maybe I should make a little bit of an adjustment, just a slight warning, but I'm still going to hug you. Right. Absolutely. She was still herself, but gave me some forewarning of what was about <laughs> what was about to happen. Right. So when we look at Ian and all the Ians that we know, they all have strengths. Um, our eye style has so many great strengths, like any of our styles, when they're overused, they start to become more weaknesses and areas of opportunities. So one of the strengths that Ian has, like Christina has mentioned, is his enthusiasm. He really likes to be liked. He is overly emotional at times, though, when he's too enthusiastic. And it can come across as being unrealistic. He's trying so hard to be liked. Ian also, like Christina mentioned, is optimistic. He sees the glass as overflowing. When he's too optimistic, though, it becomes more of an exaggeration. So the first time I worked with Ian, we were looking at a project and setting timelines. And he's like, yeah, absolutely great. I can't wait to start on this. And it was all positive. And I thought, fantastic. Then it came to actually meeting the timelines Ian wasn't being able to make them. He was over-promising and over-selling because he genuinely wanted to meet them. He was so excited about it, but that overly optimistic viewpoint led to exaggeration and unrealistic 
founded facts on how to meet the project timelines. And we need to recognize from Ian's perspective, he's that, as you said, overflowing optimism. He believes it, but it's not always grounded in, you know, data and, and facts. Right. I love the I styles and I love when Ian's around because they're so social. It takes the pressure off of me to have to be social in any way. When Ian's too social, though, he has a lack of follow-up. He comes across being careless or impulsive. He is too focused on being liked and being around people that those details and those facts, those timelines, oftentimes get missed. So let's go ahead now and just um, talk about Ian's communication style. So if you haven't figured it out by now, he's going to be very talkative. Um, and animated. He's not really going to be concerned about the data and details. Um, It's oftentimes not direct. So he'll be talking about something and um, suddenly something, yeah, (laughs) whoops, Um, something he'll go off on a tangent. Um, He's going to avoid those unpleasant topics, right? Because he prefers to focus on the positive. So um, he wants to keep the peace. He wants to keep things light. He's going to be the one that just keeps the kind of the environment um, on a, on a happy note. Um, He's very selling and inspiring in his communication style. So he can be motivated and positive and he gets things done because he gets people to help him or to build those alliances. Um, And, you know, he is successful because of that. He's not a good listener. I call it um, one directional communication. He talks, you listen. Mm -hmm. And in fact, sometimes we think, wow, you know, that eye so expressive. They really seem like they're really interested in what I have to say. They have these kind of um, over the top, you know, um, gestures like open eyes and, you know, they're like, they seem to be intent. But I jokingly say, they're probably just waiting for their opportunity to speak. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And when they talk, they do speak more about people and feelings. And um, they're going to talk about pleasant and fun issues. They're good at positive feedback. um, And they're very participative in their communication um, style. And they're going to express their ideas well. So, Christina... I actually reported to Ian at a point in my career. And the first time that we started working together, um, because our disc styles are so different, Ian would talk. And in my world, it was as though he was rambling. And I would be trying to take notes and figure out my actionable items and my takeaways and my next steps. And at the end of what I considered his ramblings, I still couldn't figure it out. And so I had to have that conversation with Ian and say, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What do you want me to do with this information? What is going on? And Ian appreciated my forthcoming and having that candid conversation and asking him that. And what we learned was just an adjustment, right? It was a small adjustment. Ian thought and processed by what I considered rambling. And so he would still need to do that. Yet at the end of it, he would say, okay, let's break this down so you know exactly what you need to do. And so that small adjustment helped provide me with what I needed to understand and break down his preferred communication style. It's funny, one of the exercises or one of the tips we tell people when you're trying to identify someone's style is, what are they not? And if you followed us through the D-Style webinar and the I-Style webinar today, you'll pretty much figure out what Amy is not. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So we're narrowing it down at this point. (laughs) All right, so let's talk about um, tips for interacting with other styles. So if I could make some suggestions to you, Ian, um, just things to think about, you know, These are not items that we're saying you have to change who you are. But if we have that kind of end goal, what we call situational awareness of how you tend to show up in different situations and are there better behaviors that you can practice and modify to that would make you more successful. So for Ian, consider being more direct, keeping to the subject. Um, 
talk less, listen more. You know, Ian, you don't have to stop talking and um, you don't have to listen all the time, but are there situations where if you did that, you would be more successful? Again, brief temporary adjustments. Don't forget to follow up. Um, we are, as an I style, emotional. Um, and sometimes that emotion can get us into trouble. So just be aware of that. Slow down, um, focus more on details and facts, and be careful. You can't hug everyone. Don't move too close to others. And Ian, we're not saying you have to do all of these things. We're not trying to change who you are. We like who you are. We're suggesting, like Christina had mentioned, situationally, what are those small adjustments? Just like in my story when I reported to Ian, right? He still needed to process and think in that way, but making a small adjustment to help me and provide me to be successful in getting those tasks accomplished. So what are some of the preferred environments for our styles and where do they feel most comfortable? So with last week or last session, we did um, D styles, which they are most comfortable in a fast paced task focused environment and they are um, and when they're in control. For the I style, they're also um, a style that thrives in a fast paced environment, but they prefer to focus on an environment that's about interaction and friendly and fun. And they are most comfortable when they're given a lot of variety, when they're not locked in. A good way if you're um, and not in a not in a controlled environment. I always jokingly say, if you want to torture Ian, just put him on a set schedule down to the minute. Yes, it would be take all the fun out of it for him. And when we think about the styles, they also have different motivators and they're seeking different things. So when we talked about Diane, our D style, she was all about being motivated by having power and control and she was seeking her own results. Ian is motivated by attention and he seeks recognition. Remember, Christina had mentioned he wants to be that center of attention. He wants public recognition. He likes having attention. He thrives on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then what irritates um, Ian? What are typical irritations for the Ians of our lives? Routine. As I said, if you want to um, annoy him or um, drain his energy, just put him on a rigid schedule. Um, what will typically happen is his limitation. He'll lack that follow up. He starts to lose concentration. Um, he'll overlook important details. But just remember, um, when we put Ian in an environment where he will thrive, he's going to think outside the box. He tends to be very creative. So um, understanding this about Ian helps us to better work and manage the Ians. Yes. All of our styles can learn something. I always say easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. Our Ians need to learn a little self-discipline. Christina was just talking about that their irritations are routine, they're limited by their lack of follow-up, but one of the things they could learn would be a little self-discipline, having some more structure and order into their day and into their lives. So let's look at Ian a little bit more closely, right? All of our styles can be frustrating to the other styles. So when Ian talks, he says something like this. Oh, that reminds me of an incredible woman I met on the train last week. She had a baby in a stroller, a laptop, coffee, groceries, et cetera, and she has her own very successful business. And where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Which conference room is, in, is the meeting in today? <laughs> and the other styles are like, Ian, stop talking all the time. But when we think about Ian's perspective, Getting to know people, experiencing positive things are very important to him and to the team. He's all about that people interaction. He's all about positive things. He's got that optimism. And I've had people tell me, like, I wonder how Ian gets any work done because he's so busy being social. But yet it's his optimism and his ability to connect with people that really drives him to succeed. He gets more done with that optimism and that socialness. And the happier Ian is, the harder he works and the better he's going to work. 
And when we can understand that that's what's going to really motivate him and give him fuel to succeed and do better, it makes us understand Ian. Yeah. And, you know, I think one of the things that Amy and I really want to impart on people when they use the DISC tool is that oftentimes we focus on what is different about the different styles. And when they are different, what is it that tends to frustrate us or irritate us about them. But really the end goal is to understand that different styles have different percept uh, perceptions of things. So, you know, we talk about how actions and behaviors themselves are essentially neutral and it's our own values and our own beliefs and our own perception that we give um, value to these actions. Um, so this is just a way to get us to think about reframing um, from what irritates us about that style and focus on the values that these styles bring to our daily jobs. I mean, there are certain things that Ian's going to do that we tend not to want to do. Absolutely. So, Christina, how would you summarize Ian? If you had to summarize Ian, what would be three words you may summarize him in? You counted them, didn't you? I did. <laughs> so for the D that style, style of mine is coming right. out again. <laughs> so for the D style, you know, it, last time it was, am I winning? The way to summarize the I style is to say, am I liked? I like to be liked. They, If you want to engage and interact with the, your I style, with your Ian, just take a little bit of time. Again, it's just temporary. It's brief. And allow that time for chat, for the chit chat. Let him speak, you know, give him mm -hmm. opportunities to speak whenever possible. And he will be more engaged. He'll be more interested in what you have to say. And there's a better chance you will walk away from that interaction, getting what, out of it what you needed. Absolutely. And one thing that I suggest to other styles when interacting with an Ian too is build time into the agenda for that because it's going to happen with Ian. He is going to talk. Chit chat is important. So rather than other styles getting frustrated that we didn't build time into our agenda, we've got to keep to task, build it in because it's going to happen. And then that small adjustment will cause you less frustration when interacting with Ian and give him then that opportunity to feel liked feel that opportunity to express himself and to be heard, and he'll be more energized to go and work on those tasks that you have for him. And of course, if DISC is a common language in our organization, people will recognize the needs to make these adjustments. And yes. we all will make some adjustments on our own part and makes it easier for everyone as a whole. So thank you, Amy, for joining us today. Thank you for um, having me. Thank you all for joining us. And we will have our next, um, the third in the series of our DIS Styles webinar, S Styles, Am I Supported? Where you'll get to meet Sam. Um, that Can't will be wait. coming up on Wednesday, August 1st. And again, we've recorded this and this will be on our YouTube, YouTube channel as soon as I can get it on. All right. Have a great day, people.